Hello and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Charlotte. If you're not new, welcome back. It's so good to have you. Today, as you will have seen from the title of this video, we're doing one of my favourite videos to watch. It's a bookshop scavenger hunt. So I got this idea from Ellen. I'll put her here. I'm sure you all know her, but yeah, I've seen her do these videos a few times now and every time I'm like, that looks so fun. Like I want to film it. I want to pick a book for my like well it's not my tbr but i want to pick a book this way rather than just looking at my shelf i'm a little bit nervous because as we may know i'm a huge mood reader i i i pick based off of the mood i'm currently in so we'll see how this goes but i think this could be really fun really really fun i'm a little bit scared but let's just get straight into things so prompt number one is pick a book that you gave five stars and then find another book you would recommend to people that liked that book I'm gonna go with Powerless by Lauren Roberts as the book that I gave five stars. The book that I would recommend for people that enjoyed Powerless is Red Queen. If you are on BookTok and you have liked videos about this book, you have probably seen a lot of discourse around how these two books are quite similar. I personally didn't find them too, too similar, but there's definitely some similarities in terms of like they are both fantasies, <laughs> they are both more like dystopian style fantasies, there's similar, similar elements with like a higher class and a lower class which I feel like happens in most kind of dystopian fantasies anyway. Um, but yeah I do think that you would probably enjoy Red Queen to some extent if you enjoy Powerless so I think they go together really nicely. Okay so prompt number two is count the number of letters in the title and then pick a random spot on your bookshelf. And count that number okay so the title we have one two three four five six seven eight eight letters so we're gonna pick a random spot and count eight so we'll go from daydream so one two three four five six seven eight and we have heartless by elsie silver so look at what's on the cover and find one with similar elements <laughs> No, this is such a hard book. Okay, so we have a cowboy hat, we have a rose, we have a guitar, and it's blue. Hmm. This is gonna be a tough one, unless I cheat and use another one of the books in this series, but we're not gonna do that. Okay, this is really hard, but I've leaned into the cowboy hat and the blue, and I picked up Done and Dusted by Lila Sage because we have the cowboy hat and the blue background. Honestly, this one was really hard. This is probably one of the hardest kinds of book to get for this trend, for, yeah, for that prompt. Reverse page number and find one with a similar page count. So 321. 123. I don't have any book that is anywhere near those amount of pages okay so the shortest book that i have is 147 pages and that is gaze at the moriseki bookshop so this is the book that we have gotten from that prompt so the next one is list some tropes and find another book that shares one or more i've not read this book i don't know what happens I'm gonna have to google it. Okay so I've literally had to google this was sh absolutely shameful tropes in this book. Um, a familiar trope used at the beginning of this novel is a young woman's heart is broken in a failed relationship. She leaves her job and returns home to her family. So we're gonna try and find a book that has that trope. Okay the most similar book that I can think of that I've got a physical copy of is beach read well actually the most similar one i could think of is dan and dusted but like we've obviously just picked that i don't want to kind of go back to square one with that book i'm gonna say beach read obviously it's not the exact same as that trope but i'm not really sure what else to go for and i feel like we do obviously have the element of she goes back or well, she goes to a new place almost but it's connected to her family like we've got some loose elements here it's the only one that i can think of but like any books that i've read that i can think of that has it other than done and dusted but we've literally just done that so i don't want to just keep doing the same book over and over again and this is why it's so difficult to do this when you read so many romances on your kindle <laughs> but the next one is find a book with the same color combo 
So colour wise we've got orange, pink, blue and yellow. Okay, kind of loose again, but I'm gonna go for A Curse for True Love. I feel like colour wise, we've definitely got some similarities there. So I feel like that kind of works together. I feel like you'd see them together kind of like in, you know, the colour spreads on Bookstagram. So I think that kind of works. And then we have, this is a tricky one. I'm scared for this. Read the first sentence, pick any word in that sentence and find a book with that word in the title. Pray for me. Evangeline Fox always believed she'd find herself inside a fairy tale one day. This is so hard. <laughs> okay. We're gonna have a browse. Okay, so I'm not sure if this counts because it's one word and if it's like part of this one word is in that first sentence. So we've got foxglove. Evangeline Fox, fox. It was the closest that I could find. So I thought we'd just go for it. And then the prompt to lead us on from here is go to the acknowledgements and find a book written by an author with the same slash similar name as the names listed. Okay. So we've got Deirdre Jones, Jolly Anna Reeves, Jenny Kim, Mara, Robin Bruce, Tandra Wobbly, Logan Hill, Debbie Hoffman, Emily Foster, Sarah Kelly, Chris Michael, Victoria Sixth, Sean Foster, Danielle Controller, Ashton Worth, Jessica Levine, Amy Lang, Megan Tenney, Becky Engel, Marissa Pinkelstein, Virginia Walter, Jake Keehan, Luke Josh, Kelly Robertson, Matthew Abra, Lydia Blacker, Emily Golden, Christine Atherton, Peter, Emily Sweet, Andrew May, Catherine Dewan, Debbie Duke, Belle Hill, Leigh Massey, Tim White, Bridget Griffin, Brittany May, Josh, Hayley Marshall. So we've got a lot of names to choose from. I'm gonna try and pick. <laughs> okay, so for the name Ellie Wilden, we have Ellie L. Cook. It was the closest I could find without going for like an author of book of a book that I've already picked up basically. Like we could have done an Emily Henry or we could have done a Victoria Avard but or a Stephanie Garber but I wanted to do something that I hadn't done yet, if that makes sense. Okay, so now we have look at the cover and find a book with a similar cover. So on this we have big font, some sofas, people texting on them, there's a cat, and it's like a turquoisey blue colour. So we're kind of wanting something that has like an animal on it, I guess, and maybe some furniture. No animal. This is so hard. Okay, I'm gonna go with last time we met because they both got like similar font, big text, similar color palette, and then like the whole idea with people at different points set in the text. So we've got like one on each side and then kind of like dotted around and there is a sofa. I feel like that's similar enough. Okay, and then we are now on the final prompt, which is a scary one. And it's add birth month and day together, turn to that page and find a book with that word in the title. So my birthday is the 7th, my birth month is October. So we're going to 17 and okay. So the first sentence is you don't need to be like that. So we're going to look for a word, a book on my TBR with one of those letters in. This is going to be fun. This was really hard. And guys, this is an absolute reach. So I had to go like quite far down the page. Um, so all the way down here. So nearly at the bottom before I could find something. I don't have too much on my TBR at the moment, which is a good thing. But a lot of things I do have are just quite like unique titles. The conversation that the characters are having on like it just isn't a conversation that like book titles are going to be and then I don't have too many books on my TBR so it's a little bit harder but the sentence that we have landed on is surely if her condition is that bad it won't be too long before you'll be back so I have taken the if I know I know it's so cheating it's such a weak word to use but from that we have if we were villains it it was not looking good guys there were just there were no like the conversation they were having is quite early on in the book so i don't think it's a spoiler or anything one of the characters is basically coming back to the uk to be with his mum while she's in palliative care it's not a conversation that's going to bring about book titles like it just isn't so we have if we were villains and this is going to be the book that we're reading together
Okay, so my camera died yesterday when I was giving an update and I have read a lot since then and I was like, oh, I'm just going to keep reading and then I was like, I can't just keep reading because there's only one book in this video. The only book we're reading is If We Were Villains. So we need to do some midway updates. So I'm on page 249. I am really liking this so far. I am not massively like a mystery girly. For this, I think I'm becoming a mystery girly. Like, well, The Dark Academia, like I like, I don't know, I'm just really liking it. It's really interesting. I, so I don't think we got into the plot before. So the book starts with Oliver. Basically, we find out that he's leaving this 10 year sentence he was prison for he's talking to a detective and the de detective is like are you finally gonna tell me like the full truth of what's happened and so like well why is he in prison if he never told the full truth like what is going on here and then we go back in time and we start piecing the timeline together of what happened but at the start of the book we don't find out who it was that was murdered so i found that really interesting because there was definitely a few times where i flip flop between characters that i thought it was going to be because of what was happening in the storyline so that was super interesting and we do kind of flip flop in timelines between the present with the detective and what happened like the timeline of the actual story but it's not like a regular time flip so the but so if we were villains is a dark academia about shakespeare students so instead of chapters we have acts and scenes so it's written it's not written like a play fully but in that way and then also some of the dialogue is written like a play so each act starts with a prologue and the prologue is in the present tense or like the present day where we're with the detective and then it goes back to when you're in the scenes you're in the the past um so it's a little bit different i actually thought that i really would not get on with the whole scene thing because it's not clear chapters but actually i'm finding it so okay it does just mean that you do end up like kind of like on random pages like there's a scene break here so it's a bit annoying but it's also like quite a quick read plot wise that's kind of what was happening we were really seeing like the build-up to when the death happened which is super interesting and yeah i really liked the shape I've, I've been enjoying the, some of the shakespeare references i haven't studied a huge amount of shakespeare it's been a really long time since i last studied shakespeare the last shakespeare i did would have been hamlet during my a levels and i'm 26 next month so we're talking like a good eight years well seven years i guess because i did my actual a level on hamlet so i've not done shakespeare in a long time basically there was like a lot about Macbeth in this and I remember Macbeth very well because I've done Macbeth so many times as I'm sure most people in the English education system have. I think we did it like we did it in drama classes a few times. Like the what do the witches say? Off the top of my head. Anyway yeah I'm really enjoying that element and I'm enjoying the whole dark academia vibe it's been quite gloomy this week and they're rainy and stormy so i definitely feel like i got a really good week to read this although i'm saying that with blue skies today so maybe not but yeah it's definitely been nice reading it in like quite an atmospheric setting i've definitely been enjoying that and yeah i'm as i said i'm on page 249 and there are 422 pages of this book so i quite like to finish it today or first thing tomorrow because it is really gripping like I did get fully gripped to it yesterday it did take me a little bit of time to get into I'm not gonna lie so I was kind of like because obviously you find out at the beginning that Oliver has just been in prison for 10 years for a murder and you want to know straight away like what like what <laughs> how what when like you want to know and it takes like a long time with the build up so i did have a struggle to get into it a little bit to begin with but once i was into it i was into it especially when we started seeing all the like twists and turns and a lot of the the different incidents and the characters are all really interesting as well we it's a group of seven so it's like a very tight-knit group they've made it through they're on their fourth year at this university where people get kicked out every year so 
obviously they're really tight knit so it makes it really interesting but yeah i'm really excited to get to the end i'm not sure how i'm gonna rate this like already i'm a bit like i wonder what the rating will be because like normally like a crime kind of book like wouldn't get a super super high rating but then i feel like because it's dark academia this is the first dark academia i'm reading as well ever because it's dark academia i'm like well it's elevated like it's a much more elevated crime story than just like the richmond osman the richard osman books do you know what i mean like it's much more elevated than that um so yeah i am gonna keep reading because i am loving it <laughs> Okay, hopefully you can't hear the rain and if you can, hopefully it's soothing. But I finished If We Were Villains last night, so let's talk about it. I am not gonna lie, I'm really struggling with a star rating for this book because I really enjoyed it, but I didn't have a five star feeling. But then I just feel like I'm writing everything four and a half at the moment. And I'm trying to figure out if I enjoyed this more or less or than some of the books that I've rated four and a half stars. So when I'm editing, I will pop my star rating in here. But for the time being, let's chat about it. So obviously this is a dark academia. We follow students at Dulcher College who were studying Shakespeare. At the start, we meet Oliver, who has been in prison for 10 years for a crime he may or may not have committed. And we witness a conversation between him and the detective, where the detective is basically like, I'm retiring, can you finally tell me what's happened? Now you're about to come out of prison. And then we basically get taken back in time and we run through the events. This is crazy. I didn't know where the plot was going at any given point you don't find out so you find out that someone turned up dead and you obviously know that oliver has been away for that death however you don't know who it is until it happens basically which was really exciting i've never read because it, it doesn't happen until like you're halfway through like you really get to know the characters and the dynamic of the friendship group before that is even introduced and then i really found myself doubting oliver who is on a rate because i was like is he just an unreliable narrator like did he just forget like because it's obviously really traumatic and i was like well is he just leaving it out of his story i was like there's something like that didn't feel majorly right and then as you start to unravel it and honestly the end was like expected but unexpected at the same time and the very end oh my god it's such a cliffhanger like you know when you literally have to google the end to find out people's perspectives on it because like, i was like like it, it's not neatly tied up you it's not a neat tied up little bow so yeah i really really enjoyed this book i don't know i didn't have a five star feeling but i feel like i could honestly say it's probably one of my favorite books so then i'm like it should be a five star which is why i'm struggling with my star rating so much and why i want to sit on it because i want to see if i like keep thinking about it because if i keep thinking about it then i probably will bump it up to a five star i'm not gonna lie but yeah i absolutely loved it it's definitely made me want to read the secret history because i'm not gonna lie like i didn't get a lot of the shakespeare references in this the only shakespeare i've like properly studied is hamlet and macbeth so a lot of the like they there's a, quite a lot of king Lear references um prosperous obviously caesar like you know we kind of know what like I, I feel like that's one that like most people have like some kind of knowledge on but i didn't have like that in-depth shakespeare knowledge but i didn't find that like a detriment like i'm sure there's a i'm sure i would have engaged with the plot a lot more and maybe things would have were foreshadowed through shakespeare that i just didn't quite get because my knowledge isn't good enough on the place but yeah i really really enjoyed it though really enjoyed it I would really recommend and it's definitely made me want to dive more into dark academia and i'm really glad 
that I had this book picked for me from this challenge because this has been on my TOEL for a while. I did like do a soft DNF on it before and it was definitely a book that I was just like very intimidated by because of like the Shakespeare stuff but I did really really enjoy it and I'm really excited to keep reading Dark Academia over the autumn months and yeah it was it was super good super enjoyable and 10 out of 10 would recommend <laughs> but that is everything from me it feels so weird reading only one book in a video but that is everything from me i really hope you enjoyed if you enjoyed the concept of this video please let me know because i will definitely do more of these i think this could be a really good way for me to tackle my tbr so if you're interested in seeing more of these please let me know um otherwise i will catch you in the next one hopefully bye